Hi, my name is Pavan Davra, and welcome to Precious Brain Lab, where we talk on brain disorders, brain development, and brain connectivity. In today's episode, we're going to understand and unfold a part of depression, why depression is so difficult to treat, and what are we supposed to do in terms of understanding this disease. Depression is not just a mental illness, but the rise of depression has increased since uh, after pandemic, which means people are prone to depression. Um, But is there any way that we can understand depression? Because most of the people who knows about it knows very little on a psychological level, which is why in today's episode we're going to unfold all of this on a neuroanatomical level to understand the part of depression. Since we are still in the process of learning things, we're still trying to understand the nature of depression. And that's what the real challenge is. If we talk just on the psychological level, okay, something goes in and then you're, you're depressed, But is that the ultimate truth? Or there is something more to this? Let us find out in today's episode. So, to begin with, uh, as you can see, a dopamine imbalance can cause depression symptoms such as apathy and feeling of hopelessness, while a serotonin imbalance can affect the processing of emotions results in loss of motor functions and abnormal reward system yes that is true abnormal reward functions means that we are what are we supposed to do in the part of the you know in the present moment that is lacking in depression because We're supposed to evolve, we're supposed to modify, we're supposed to learn, memorize. All of that is wrecked in depression. Because we cannot understand. Imagine that your personality was something in the past, but after depression has changed. Why would there be such a drastic change? It should be a minor change, right? But that didn't happen. The motor function is wrecked. People who are seriously depressed, what happens to them? They start to feel that, you know, they accept that, uh, that, you know, something bad has happened and I'm unworthy, finished. They're going to sit down and they're going to start to feel hopeless. Yes, it is challenging. I understand. But aren't we supposed to understand what happens inside? That is what I'm going to make you realize. The first section I talked about, that there is an abnormal motor function, an abnormal reward system. Abnormal, why abnormal? Because neither you can evolve as a human being, neither uh, you can receive or understand why didn't I get this reward? And what am I supposed to do to evolve? This is quite challenging because once the brain accepts, then the reward is wrecked. You're sitting down with just one condition, I'm unworthy. And that becomes abnormal. Even when the time of receiving something, something good happens, you will still say, I'm unworthy to receive this reward. It's an abnormal system that happens inside, uh, which is why most of the depressed people, they don't know how to react or how to understand this cycle. They simply accept and sit down. And that's the challenging part. So then what happens is, depression relies heavily on dopamine signaling, especially cost, benefit, decision making, and reward learning, influenced negatively, both by acute treats and chronic stress. These are the main characteristics of depression, is the cost, benefit, decision making. What is cost, benefit, decision making? Let's try and understand this. Let's say, um, uh, I'm going to invest in something. 
Let's say I'm going to buy some shares. Isn't it? So you're expecting something bigger. I've made a good amount of, you know, investment. I should re get in return something. But all of a sudden you're sleeping. The next morning, trade trading begins. And the one that you bought, boom, finish, drops. Not only that, you're waiting to come up, but now you're in double depth, double dips, which means the depth is higher now because you waited, it's not coming up at any time, sooner. So you're in pressure. Once that thing is completely dropped and it's not coming up, heart attack, heart failure, severe depression, alcohol, drinking, drugs, anything is possible to get rid of this feeling. It can happen. If you're strong enough, you'll drink alcohol, you'll smoke, you'll take drugs. Addiction will begin. This is what the cost-benefit decision-making is. Reward learning. Reward learning in, you know, especially in relationships. How many of you feel unworthy? Like, you know, my partner is like cheating on me. My partner, I did everything for him or her and that person is not giving me anything. What is actually happening here? Reward decision making was really bad, which is why it is cost benefiting, which means you're about to get into severe depression. Once you know that your partner is cheating on you, I gave him her money, him or her, I gave him or her all kinds of facility. I did, I gave this person unconditional love. In return, I didn't get anything. Finish. Another reward learning. You know, my parents, I did everything for my parents, but my parents gave the property to my uh, younger or elder son. Uh, you know, uh, elder brother. I did not get anything. Depression. Finish. <clears throat> Influence negatively, which means somebody comes and tells you something inside of you and now you're going to start to believe in it and you're going to have negative impact inside of you. What is that? Somebody comes and says, did you take this medication? It's really going to give you a really bad effect sooner or later. Do something about it. It's not going to be good. Another one. What have you done? <coughs> You gave, you, you went ahead and gave your exams and this answer is wrong. Why did you do it? This is absolutely bad. And then the other one, you know, your friend is telling you this, you're not unworthy. Uh, you know, he, he's keep telling you, telling everybody that, you know, uh, you've been doing this, you've been doing that. So that influence in the brain can cause severe depression. You see, these are chronic stress. What is this? Every now and then, you're the only person who's running, uh, earning in the family. Or let's say, you know, your partner is not earning anything and you're doing everything, but he keeps spending, he or she. Chronic stress. Uh, <clears throat> I have to take care of my kids as well. My uh, wife or husband is not keeping well. Chronic stress. You see, there are certain things that can lead to severe depression. This is why I brought this up at the very beginning to make you understand what depression is. It's a deeper anatomical level. Why is so hard to treat depression? The next thing that we understand is depressed individuals have been found consistently to be characterized by difficulties with inhibition of negative information and deficits in working memory a ruminative response to negative mood states and life events and the inability to use positive stimuli to regulate negative mood. Obviously, if somebody comes up and says, hey, you know what? Don't worry, I'm with you. Everything's going to be all okay. Just forget about it. Try to understand the intensity of that part of the depression. Instead of saying these lines, you have to be extremely careful about how do you 
communicate with the other person in terms of depression. If you just keep saying that, you know, stay positive, do this and do that, it's not going to work. Why? Because in this video, I'll make you explain in detail why is it difficult for somebody to accept positiveness. And even when a depressed person goes to a positive place, the reminder of negativity is really high. They get sensitive towards the negative part. Why is this? Let us try and understand in a deeper level what exactly we need to understand from here on, especially in terms of neurochemicals. So let us try and understand the difference between serotonin and dopamine. So as you can see, that uh, dopamine has an abnormal reward system in terms of depression I'm talking and in serotonin it is unable to process emotions in these two conditions if you see dopamine means abnormal reward system in depression usually you don't know what you want and why are you so depressed? If somebody gives you something really nice, you're not going to accept it easily. You're not going to feel happy. But instead of that, you're going to start to ruminate about the past. That, you know, this happened, you know. And uh, why are these people giving me the, all of this? Why? Because there's an abnormal reward system in depression. Unable to process emotion. Now, serotonin is a big component that helps in process emotions. Now, when this is disrupted in depression, how can you process emotions? Think about it. So, this is one of those major deficits you're going to find in depression. Then comes a part of lack of motivation. The dopamine system shuts down after when an information goes inside your brain, which means lack of dopamine in depression, which means lack of motivation. People can sit down and do nothing. Then comes restlessness. Because that thing is irritating you inside, that information that has caused depression, there's a lot of restlessness due to that information. All you think about and ruminating about that past and that depression is really weighing on your brain. Then comes if the dopamine goes down, like it just shuts down in your brain, then what happens? Lack of loss of appetite, which means even the food you eat, dopamine is not helping you to feel, uh, you know, motivated, like, you know, I want to eat, I'm hungry. No. In depression, loss of appetite, finish, you cannot eat. Serotonin, what happens? Confusion in working memory, which means dopamine, uh, Ah, it's shut down. That, that, that's the main part. Now, serotonin is a component that helps you in terms of working memory as well. Now, if serotonin is also lacking P, uh, 5-HT, which means the working memory is wrecked. You don't know what to do. You're just sitting down and you're ruminating. That's it. You don't know what to do with the past of the present moment. I'm sorry. Then comes dopamine, poor concentration. If dopamine is not spiking, how can you stay focused? It's impossible. Dopamine motivates you to stay focused. If that component is wrecked, how can you stay focused? That's also another challenging. Then serotonin, what happened to that? High blood pressure changes found in the hypothalamus. If serotonin is actually being wrecked, then you'll have imbalance in your blood pressure as well. Hypothalamus is imbalance, which means uh, blood pressure and hypothalamus are abnormal conditions. Depression also can cause low blood pressure or really high blood pressure. In these two conditions, patients suffer a lot. And this is why it is very hard to treat in depression. So one of the major components in depression is we need to analyze what are we supposed to do in these two terms because serotonin and dopamine is wrecked. So personality will change, isn't it? So why would there be a sudden change in the characteristics beyond these two conditions, right? VTA, 
uh, these are the brain regions that release dopamine and then we see D2 receptors in the eyes and then we see dopamine and sorry norepinephrine in the frontal cortex then uh, mesolimbic system for addictions then monomind receptors that um, actually comes with the norepinephrine the dopamine uh, you know these uh, chemicals and there are a uh, few more of them involved in it now these things are wrecked that is why depression is unable to treat it's very difficult when it comes to major depressive disorder why would you go that extent that's also interesting let us try and understand more on these terms. So, predictability from the limbic system during a reward gives an outcome of that reward major problem in keeping you in depression. Predictability from the limbic system. Wow. You see, I talked about major depressive disorder. This is that predictability I always say. That when I research on these things, I always make sure that I have something to give out. Predictability. Depression and predictability goes hand in hand. They're the best friends. Predictability of the outcome. Depression means negativity increasing inside the limbic system. The bang on psychic brain. Which means I'm going to speak up. I know. It's going to happen that way and I'm going to be in depression. It's already done inside basal ganglia giving that motor function. I am in that position to get into depression and this goes on. You see, this is a psychic ability of limbic system. It will take you to that part where I know it is going to be that way. I know it. But it's not that way. It is the predictability of the limbic system which means that it can cause illusion. The, predict the, the predictability is coming out from the wrecked system of that reward. It's an abnormality. Please try to understand. Abnormality is how. Uh, let's say, I'll give an example. Let's say uh, I, have, um, I have a mobile phone. Simple, simple example. Now, usually what happens, I unlock it, I make a call, and I, I can make a call. But what happens is, the screen turns on. But as I make call, the screen turns blank. Now when I call, I don't know whether the call is connected or not. But again, when they, when they hang up the phone, uh, somehow I can see the display in the end. But when I make a call, the display is gone. What is happening? There's a disconnection happening in the, uh, you know, the, 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 the screen. You know, the screen, the display is having a problem with connection. So sometimes it's turned on, sometimes it's not. So in depression, what happens? The reward is sometimes feeling good, sometimes not. Feeling good, sometimes not. So this negativity coming out of the amygdala, the hippocampus, they all are shrink that volume from the temporal lobe to the frontal cortex. How can the reward system be normal? Think about it. Then what happens? Predictability goes towards the negative side, which means they're manifesting the same cycle outside. Isn't it? So what happens then? They're receiving that reward by increasing depression. Finish. Gone. So interestingly, the limbic system is important. Temporal lobe, deep inside limbic system. Frontal cortex, both the side, if I show you like this, both of these right here, right there. If you see like this, both, you know, I'm showing you like this. So both of these regions are wrecked, finish gone shrink in the volume the volume decreases in depression they keep decreasing because the activity is limited predictability increase activity reduces to half volume reduces slowly with time what are we supposed to do with temporal lobe what are we supposed to do with limbic system what are we supposed to do with the frontal cortex what are we supposed to do 
we're supposed to utilize it in the present moment. Are we doing that in depression? No. We're not utilizing any of that. So what is happening? Bang on. There is a wreck system inside. And it's going in the past, but the present, you're losing everything. And that's depression. There's nothing you can do about it. So now what happens is, see, see what happens. In the case of loss of hippocampal volume, a de definite pathopsychological, a physiological, a related to <coughs> hypocortisolamia, related neurotoxicity has been postulated. Now, if you see uh, hypercortisolamia related neurotoxicity. What exactly is hypocortisolamia? What is this? Why there would be a shrink volume in hippo, uh, hippocampus? Why? Why there would be? This is that reason. Now what exactly this is? Let us try and understand even more. Hypocortisolamia is a condition involved in prolonged excess of serum levels of cortisol that can develop as a result of dysregulatory abnormalities in uh, hypothalamic pituitary adrenaline axis or from uh, exogenous source steroids. These are medications that act like cortisol in the body. Exoneus source steroids. One of the favorite tablets, one of the baddest name, dexamethasone. I'll give you the, this is a worldwide use. Dexamethasone can also cause cushion syndromes. Cushion syndromes are really bad. If you could see that, that in the, you know, that uh, there, there are the stretch marks and you have a cushion type belly you've gained a lot of weight your face is an abnormal condition this is because of synthetic cortisol that is shrinking the volume of your hippocampus these medications there are also another medications as well what they do they actually reduce the inflammation inside the brain uh, especially they give it in the terms of brain cancer, brain tumors patients. They give these medications, dexamethasone, 4 mg, 16 mgs, or even uh, depression people, they give certain medications that has the part of uh, uh, cortisol in those medications, serum levels. They can go abnormal, they can get wrecked. And that is why most of the depressed patients, they also gain a lot of weight. You see, I'm giving you the right stuff to understand what happens inside. This is that major factor. If you want to come out of it, then don't, don't take these medications. I feel sad for people who do these things, but there's nothing that, uh, you know, if, if you're not gonna help yourself, then the medications, you gotta take them. And if you don't take them, committing suicide, 100%. If you don't take medication, you don't treat yourself. If you don't want to take medication, then seek help. Seek help. I'll give you several stuff in this video. How can you improve depression? If you can do that on your own, your depression is gone. And if you don't do anything like that, then it's untreatable in the end. MDD. What's going to happen? Coronal heart disease, high blood pressure, uh, chances of having paralytic stroke, dementia, you name it, it's going to happen. These are the facts and reality I'm talking about on a neuroanatomical level. MDD is the last stage. Like, you know, you have cancer. Let's say if you have GBM, glioblastoma. GBM is very bad. And if you get to the last stage of it, which is uh, untreatable, then even after giving radiation, the patient dies. You know, they give uh, radiation, but longevity decreases to like, you know, if their survival rate is like, from 10 patients, only one patient can survive. So imagine if they've given you radiation and then they've done the operation and still it grows really faster, then your survival chances are lead to like after the part of, um, you know, um, 
what do you call it um you know chemo radiation uh, chances of survival leads to like about one and a half month two months patient dies it's very difficult for them to survive these are neuroanatomical understanding because you're killing the cells the glial cells they're just dying in there constantly the brain cannot support healing at all even after giving dexamethasone the patient still cannot improve and they die um i can talk deep into brain cancer as well i will come up on some video only on brain cancer so you can understand how to improve your condition on deep deep about operations about you know um what do you call it um, radiations how much radiations are allowed to give specifically on the depth of uh, the part of that cancer especially on gbm and uh, astrocytoma and the other cancer related brain diseases so i'm going to talk on these terms in depth so you can understand when you go you'll be well prepared of understanding how much radiations are supposed to be given for how many weeks what what other types of stuff you can do apart from operation and radiation i'll give entire information i'll make a good video on that on a deeper level also i'll give you certain informations on food as well how to improve your conditions even when you have gbm so let us get ahead along with this so what happens after that inside the brain let us try and understand so as you can see the decline in reward causes synthesization in the limbic system which also projects the predictability of the reward sending a strong signal via somatic sensory of pain and keeping you in depression for weeks months or years this is a very 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 crucial cycle what i'm talking about if you understand this your life is changed for good i told you psychic ability of limbic system positive and negative you must have seen psychic people what do i mean psychic people you know when um you go to these people who do voodoo's and all of that when you go and sit with them they start talking about you isn't it i know you i know your past i know what you did i know what this and that they start talking and you start to believe where does this come from this comes from the psychic ability of the limbic system it actually has the psychic ability to understand the bit of a part of the person personality and they start to analyze all of that and they give you the, that information so that's a positive side of it you must have seen um you know the recently that i've heard a lot about on a uh, tarot reading like i don't believe much on those lines because i come from the spirituality but i've heard about it that um you know they predict the future by looking at those you know they kind of shuffle the cards and they i don't know they do the all those things and they say like uh they talk about your future isn't it so where that thing comes from vision and the limbic system the psychic ability they see they imagine things and they start to talk because what i heard was they look at the card and then they start to speak so if they look at that card then the limbic system is applied to the front to the eyes and they start to process that information it's a positive thing isn't it so the negative part is then they're now we're talking the decline in reward sensitization in the limbic system which means the limbic system very sensitive sensitive towards what predictability of the negativity as soon as the depression goes in you'll see in the patients uh, especially in the patients uh, something bad happened uh, let's say you had a bad breakup easy bad breakup everybody goes through that bad breakup now in a relationship if this girl or a guy is a it's not very old like you know it's young like about in the 20 to between 20 to 25 sensitization in the limbic system which means they've experienced that information inside how they had a hard break now what happens is when they go out and they're giving out venting out their emotions 
There's a predictability. If that person tries to get close to you, then again, the limbic system predicts it. That, you know, this is also going to happen that way. Stay away. And then they'll say, I'm unworthy to love. I don't want this. I know that, uh, you know, if somebody comes into my life, I'm going to have a heartbreak. Where does this come from? You know, I'm talking about the negative ad. Please learn this. It's a predictability of the limbic system. And then it's coming out. Finish. Sensitive towards negativity. Any positive and turns negative. This is what, then what happens when they talk on those terms where the predictability happens. Then what happens? What, what am I talking about? Imagine, you must have seen, hot and cold. Uh, if you put your hands in a hot tub, do you feel hot? Yes. If you put your hand inside a cold water, you feel cold. In both the conditions, you can feel the sensations, right? I'm talking about this sensation. When the pain goes of a negativity, when the predictability happens, then there is a pain happens inside. Sensation coming from the part of somatic sensory, the pain. You feel it. You feel that. It gives you that confirmation. You're on the right track. This is absolutely wrong. If you continue with these sensations, you continue with these predictability. MDD, major depressive disorder. Finish. Not even clinical trials can do anything. You go to a neurologist, they will ultimately go and remove a you know, MRI scan. They will also do an EEG because we also want to see any epilepsy that is causing major depressive disorder. There are chances of having epilepsy as well. So uh, EEG will give us the signaling pathways where we talk on the uh, part of the brain regions where the central, the lateral, uh, you know, the sides, the, the posteriors. So all of those clips, they'll give us the signaling. You have to just close your eyes and just sit and let us do the monitoring, what is happening. But you cannot sleep. Please try to understand. Don't sleep. Just close your eyes and sit down and let us do the talking. The machine is going to give us the accuracy of why those uh, part of the brain regions are highly active and what are we supposed to do in terms of bringing back them to normal. Now this is all neuroanatomical level that I'm talking. Deep understanding. Then what happens? Depressed individual shifts from episodic to semantic autobiographical memory retrieval in which they overgeneralize and uh, consequently reduce executive resources that lead to pervasive negative self-presentation. Now this was done by Watson, Bernstein, uh, uh, Quicken and uh, Watkins in 2013. You know these guys, uh, I've been following Watson to be honest, but not the other guys as much as Watson. Uh, what actually happening in this is that negative self-representation, this is very important. Why it is like that? Because the limbic system, I told you, the psychic abilities, your predictability is over generalization. It's just going beyond the regulation. Then how can it stay normal? This was done in 2013. Now look at the scientific way of understanding this. How beautifully this has been shown. Episodic to semantic biographical memory. Now episodic memory. Episodic memory I talked about, let's say you had a heartbreak. So if you had a heartbreak, then what happens to the brain? I told you, right? The guy will sit down and he or she will think about that past episodic memory, how the breakup happened. And then there'll be an over, over analyzation, over generalization. And then there'll be like an you know, acceptance of, you know, um, I'm a bad person. I hurt this person or whatever happened, I cheated or whatever. Or this person broke my heart. They cheated on me, he or she. So I'm unworthy and this and that. That comes with the power of the limbic system. It's just giving you that predictability. This is depression. Neuroanatomical level, if you understand all of this, I'll give you several tips to improve your depression as well. 
So first understand all of this, and then you'll understand the rest of it. How are we supposed to do it? Then what happens is, uh, as you can see, the limbic region implicated in depression are the amygdala, hippocampus, and dorsal medial thalamus. Both structural and functional abnormalities are found in depression. Decreased volume in hippocampus and amygdala. Finish. I say that condition leads to, uh, you know, uh, straight to uh, committing suicide. The day you're in depression, the day you're in depression, please try to understand. If it's taking time, it's going beyond two years, three years, there are high chances of you committing suicide. I'm going to be honest. Why? Because I'm putting my hands up. Vol decrease volume in hippocampus and amygdala. If you don't improve yourself with your hands and legs, and if you don't sink with the present moment, and you continue to live in the past, you'll be gone forever. No amount of, you know, the CBT, REBT, or, uh, you know, CBT, they, they consider the best treatment for depression. I'm not saying that it's bad. CBT for depression, yes, it is possibly good. Why? Because you want to make you realize that you know you're you're worthy enough and you should be positive enough to move forward that is cbt but i don't get into cbt because that's not my business my business is to understand the activity inside what is happening inside and i want to correct that system that's it forget about giving you these uh, positive notions i'm not against any of this but my simple logic is that I need to find that pin that is causing an hindrance. Now I'll give you an example. Let's say you put a coin. You must have seen that machine where you put the coin and you get that uh, Pepsi or Coke out of that machine. You put that coin, but now you're not getting that Coke and Pepsi. It is stuck inside. Again, you put that coin, but it's still stuck inside. What are you going to do? You want to manually open up and take that out, right? Because they've given that money. So you're going to call up somebody and that person is going to open up and give you that Coke. What I'm talking about is, I'm not talking about the outside, which means the automated system. You put that money and you get that Coke out. I want to know where is that problem inside that machine that is actually causing an entrance to give you that reward. You see what I'm saying? That the reward system is wrecked, isn't it? So I want to understand your brain function. So I can treat you accordingly to your brain function. Finish. No CBD and all of that. Once I move, shift your ability to move your functionality. Shifting. Your life is changed. No CBD and all of that. This is what I call neuroscience. And I love it. This is my passion. And I dive deep to give you information. I love this. If I understand inside, then why should I play games from outside? I can simply snap it off and start moving you to some direction that's going to improve your reward. Finish. This is neuroscience. So when we get to this, then what happens after that? After that, <clears throat> now we understood what, what, what I want to make you realize. I'm feeling so much empowered by talking like this because I know what this is. I know what this You know, when you have that feeling, you know what it is. You start to build confidence because you want to help others. For God's sake, help others to bring them out, to give that sunshine in their, in their life, that sunlight that happiness to move forward you're worthy you're worthy enough to live this life that's it and that's what I want to give and that's why I feel so empowered so what happens next let us understand the default mode network DMN uh, which includes the ACC anterior cingulate cortex uh, which is also uh, called a region that also helps you to uh, process uh, uh, you know, emotions. Uh, 
and a large portion of uh, medial prefrontal cortex, which is MPFC, extending uh, inferiorly into the uh, orbital prefrontal cortex. This network is uh, opposite it to be involved with internally generated thought and is inhibited when individuals uh, attend to external stimuli that require uh, attention and cognition. So, <clears throat> this condition, default mode network, including ACC, and the large portion of medial prefrontal cortex, you know, the midsection, if I talk, let's say, you know, I'll give an example, simple terms. I'm not going to talk about the right position, but I'm giving an example. Let's say from here to here, okay? Here to here. Now, can you analyze the middle, middle portion? It comes right in the center, right? Example, please try to understand. I'm not giving the right position, but I'm trying to make you understand. So imagine this is the midsection, uh, medial prefrontal cortex for now. But when I have that uh, brain thing, you know, when I've got... Um, uh, the part of that brain, if I can show you a, with the brain structure, then it'll be easier for me, me make you understand that. So that is majorly involved. So largely portion of that is involved with orbital prefrontal cortex right here in the end, down bottom, behind the eyes, orbital prefrontal cortex. Now what happens is, that requires a thing, Attention and cognition, finish. If you're in depression, can you talk? Can you do things? Can you understand anything? Can you learn things? No, you cannot. Because depression is so hard to treat that you lose your cognition. You will lose the ability to understand and think well. And that's where it will get challenging. And in the end, uh, uh, you'll uh, subside from them. And there'll be a part where uh, you'll be away from everybody you want to sit alone and you want to ruminate about that past which is why these networks are wrecked it's very dangerous because the automated system is gone finished if you're not learning anything then how can that automated system will work imagine that there is this automatic washing machine if you're not going to wash anything then how that automatic machine will work that machine is gone finished isn't it? If you're not going to use this for learning and memorizing, then how that DMN is going to work is going to be wrecked, which means depression is really gone, finished. The ability to learn and understand is gone. Even in the present moment, if I look at this pen, I will just look at it and I just keep staring at it. But when I'm staring at it, the brain is actually thinking about that past, finish. There's nothing left inside, only depression. How can you stay normal? In children, I'll give an example in children, depression is high. You will not understand their language when they speak, but you'll understand how they're behaving and you'll say, oh, something is happening to him or her. We should try and talk to them. This is where the help of Excuse me, you should definitely visit a child psychologist to help you in coping depression. Because I always say that depression is not just about, you know, learning and, uh, you know, just outside stuff. If you understand the functionality from inside, then you know, okay, my child has depression. I should take her to the counseling psychologist or psychiatrist or whatever, wherever, wherever you want to take. Take them there and then they'll help you. But mostly I say, take them to uh, a place where they don't have to give any medications because they're in a growing stage. So you should offer something like child psychology or child psychologist because they're not, they're not gonna offer you any medications. They'll obviously treat them <clears throat> with different kinds of activities to improve their depression. So that's much better than taking them to any psychiatric doctors. They ultimately, they'll give medication. That's no good. So I don't recommend that. So then what happens is, <clears throat> what happens after that? As you can see, hyperactivity in amygdala, parahippocampal gyrus, and uh, 
cerebellum cause fear, restlessness, and anger, guilt, and severe pain sensations. Hyperactivity. Who is going to talk on this? Don't a depressed people have anger issues? Yes, they have. The moment you talk positiveness, they'll say, don't talk to me like this. You don't know what I've been through. And why should I talk to you? Why should I tell you? What is this? It comes from the brain region of amygdala, passing that information from inside. And now that information from parahippocampal gyrus and cerebellum, which means imbalance, restlessness, fear, uh, severe pain sensations, which means the moment they start to talk, they feel that pain. They feel the sensation in the hands and legs. They feel sensations right up from here. That's very dangerous because that pain is giving them an indication that you're on the right path. Continue this. Don't listen to others. If you can go against that system, then your life has changed, my friend. Your life has changed. Recognize that pain. That pain is taking you for a long ride in depression. And if you want to stay good, you want to stay healthy, you recognize that pain is very important using your prefrontal cortex. Because the only way somatic sensory can be recognized is by this. If this is shut down and there is pain, then the limbic system is going to take control and keep you in that cycle for months, for years, and there's nothing you can do about it. So that needs to be understood that you're supposed to take care of yourself. Now, hyperactivity is a way to understand that there's a lot of activation going around that region. I imagine that, you know, you, you have a home and in all of that home, the entire home, one room, I give an example, one room has bright light and the other rooms have dim light. What does that mean? There is a lot of energy supplying in that room, which is why the light is so bright. So activation means, hyperactivation means that one region is focused highly inside the brain and there's a lot of activity going around there. And the rest of it is, is really sitting down and not much activity seen. If you see that in fMRI, you'll see that you'll see that activation is really high. It clearly shows in fMRI. And that's why I'm talking about this. Then what happens is the Celeste Network SN and Central Executive Network CEN have been found uh, to be disrupted in MDD. This was done by uh, Tamation in 2016. Tamation is also really, really, really working hard on these sections, especially when you talk on these networks. Uh, he really works on those sort of levels. Uh, what I like about his work is that he's always seeking for answers in these deeper connect uh, connections. You know, he's an insanely amazing person but uh, have not met him on person, personal level. But hats off to his work. <laughs> he works really hard and he's done a great, great job. You see, I like to appreciate people. You see, this is better regulation. Appreciate, don't be defensive. Even you feel happy when you appreciate. Why? Because they've done such a hard work, they're giving us answers. Appreciation. And you feel happy. Emotional regulation. Yes, I'm a part of this. And I love it because they're doing their job and they're helping everybody. And so I'm doing that job as well. Happiness. Good emotional regulation. Celeste Network and uh, Central Executive Network, these both are very, very, very essential for, uh, let's say, if you want to learn and understand stuff, then these networks are very, very essential. In terms of understanding these functions, I can highly recommend you that you should always meditate. If you want good regulation of these network connections, learn to meditate, my friend. Uh, it's a friendly advice. 
meditation is the best way to improve these connections. What kind of meditation is good? Uh, <clears throat> guided meditation is good. Meditation, chanting meditation is good. Then there is also, uh, you know, group meditation is good, where people are sitting together and they're meditating. Then there is uh, chanting, when you're sitting together and you chant, uh, that's also good. That also improves the connections and also improves your mood and regulation. So it's a very, very good way to find balance inside. These activities improve temporal lobe and frontal cortex, which is why I recommended these activities. They improve temporal lobes and frontal cortex. Even schizophrenics, the if they do these activities, it's very good. You know, the, these activities will improve temporal lobe regions and frontal cortex. So it's very, very good for them as well. But then what happens is, uh, let us try and understand more. The hippocampus is involved in the appraisal and regulation of stress and in generation of emotions. What are we talking about? The hippocampus is involved in appraisal and regulation of stress and generation of emotions. When the volume is shrinked in hippocampus, can you have regulation of stress and generation of emotions? Think about it. If the volume is, uh, it begins, uh, it's in a healthy shape and in, in a good shape then you could say that there is a good regulation and uh, you could have good emotions as well, isn't it? But if the volume shrinks, how can that be normal, isn't it? Even if you're stressing out when you're sleeping, you cannot stay awake well, you cannot sleep well in depression. That's because it just keeps hitting you with that same information inside the brain. And that is why you cannot stay awake. You cannot st sleep, I'm sorry. You stay awake, it'll be stressing you out and all, all, all the other things are going to subside and ultimately you're going to feel sad and remorseful about all of these things, which is why it is very dangerous. If you want something good to happen, then you got to learn to appreciate it. So then what happens is, uh, let us try and understand on a deeper level what else can happen possibly. Uh, so, as you can see, the limbic information cycle relates to unexpressed emotions, which leads to anger, drug, and alcohol addictions, music, and movies that relate to his or her emotions. The limbic information cycle was introduced by me way back in time. What this cycle means is that information that goes inside is actually controlled by the limbic system and whenever it wants, that limbic cycle will bring it out in any form, whether it's in form of anger, drugs, alcohol, addictions, music and movies related. This information cycle can lead to months and months of feeling guilty and anger and uh, even abusive uh, using uh, physical and verbal abuse as well. Limbic information cycle means this is eruption of your frontal cortex which means if somebody's getting angry the limbic system limbic information cycle is highly active inside the brain. It is actually controlling and then you lose your control on the prefrontal cortex and that's it you're finished. You're, there's a lot of impulsivity, there's a shivering of your hands and legs, and then uh, you're losing control over your body. That information is still supplying all of that, and you're still stimulating your brain. And that's why this cycle is so important to understand. It's very important to find balance in this information cycle. Then what happens is, um, let us try and understand. If this cycle is responsible to keep you in there, if you continue, okay, if you continue to remain in that cycle, then what happens? White matter hyper intensities may represent early signs of uh, uh, demyelation. This was done by uh, Hajek in 2000, uh, 2005. Uh, Hajek in 2005 
uh, he said common in depression than in healthy individuals. Now Hajek said that demyelation, hyperintensity, demyelation in white matter. Now white matter is also very important, equally as gray matter. If there is changes found in these white matters, then you're about to stuck in depression for weeks, for months and for years. Now, after you cross, please understand, after you cross the limitation of your thinking and your emotions, and now you accepted it completely after months, structural changes begins. White matter, gray matter, uh, hippocampal, then uh, amygdala, volume loss in these regions, and it's going to uh, demotivate you even more, keeping you in that cycle for months and finish. Then what you got to do, you got to offer TMS, uh, brain stimulation. Then you got to offer electrical shock to stimulate the brain. So there are many things that you can do, but those are all expensive treatments. Uh, they, they, they're not normal. and they, they, Mostly they're not covered by the insurance as well. So it's very expensive, those treatments are. So if you don't want to get to that stage, then you've got to learn to understand. If you're accepted, you're sitting down for years, then structural and gray matter, white matter changes 100%. If you don't believe me, go into an fMRI. I will give you guarantee there'll be a lot of changes in there. Guaranteed. I'm not just saying it. I'm giving you guaranteed. If you're stuck in depression for years, then you go and do it. And then see if I'm lying or whatever I'm doing in this video. I want to give you the right answers, which is why I'm talking on this. <clears throat> then what happens is, let us try and understand even more. So as you can see, how does it affect from inside? Let us try and understand. Now, hippocampus, whenever the information goes from, uh, you can see the sensory input, good or bad, it goes inside. It reaches hippocampus, then somatic sensory is absolutely wrecked. If it's a bad information goes inside, hippocampus is going to signal the somatic sensory in terms of pain sensation. Then affective response due to that pain the response will be quite effective, which means a person can understand that you are in depression. Then what happens in the end is dysfunction in emotional regulation. That response is a dysregulation of emotions because you cannot find balance in reality and that emotional pain that's going inside. So there is a severe dysregulation found in the emotions. So you must have seen in depression, when you talk, uh, people can catch you like this. Oh, what has happened to you? Why are you so sad? Why are you so depressed? What happened? And then they'll say, no, no, no. You'll put up a smile. Left and right amygdala, responsible to hide the sadness, responsible to hide emotions. So you'll have a good face by showing up, you know, like this. And then there is a lot of pain is flowing inside, which means you're in depression. And they'll say, no, I, I can understand, you're in depression. That is a dysregulation of emotion. It's mismatch from the outside, the inside, which means you're going to be severely in depression. And that is why you are going to continue to remain in depression for months, for years, for weeks, um, you know, going the opposite, like weeks, months, years, sorry. So now that we understood the part of uh, how depression really, really takes on you and what are we supposed to do to come out of depression, uh, these things are also on those lines. But what about knowing the real factor whether you're in depression or not. So one of the most prominent things that happens in depression is uh, the sense of smell does not pass through the thalamus to the root 
rooted to the cortex. Rather, order information is relayed directly to limbic system, a brain region typically associated with memory and emotional processing. So, if I were to take, you know, something like a good smell, it's not going to hit you. So, that part is wrecked. It's not going to get here. But an odor, bad smell, will directly hit deep inside the limbic system. And then it's going to recall all of that memories and it's going to start to make you feel depressed. This is that part of understanding where and a smell can also keep you in depression for days. Uh, I'll give an example. Uh, you know, in one of those uh, conditions in the depression, a patient uh, kept saying that, you know, um, for five days I was lying in bed, I did not take bath, I did not do anything, but that uh, smell from my body, like I was, uh, the odor, uh, that actually kept me in that cycle of depression. And it just kept reminding me that what actually happened until someone came and shake him up and then he went and took bath and he started to started his life again but that those five days were horrible for him because he was just lying in bed and doing nothing at all he was just lying and he gave up completely only he could smell the odor of his body now that was quite an interesting because these findings are really 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 important because it does not pass through the thalamus it just goes directly to the limbic system which means it's creating a big major picture inside your brain and keeping in that cycle for uh, weeks imagine uh, you know you want to cook food now if you keep the pan on a gas stove uh, you know uh, the, the flames they cook that food right but imagine if there is uh, no, uh, you know, uh, that is what that uh, smell is doing to the depression, the memory. That smell is acting like that fire, you know, uh, to cook that food. So that smell is actually cooking the part of the depression inside your brain, which is why you also have to actively keep yourself hygiene during depression because that also keeps you in balance. Now, since we've reached here, we'll go dive deep understanding between self and depression. Two things that I want to make you explain. Self and depression. Self and depression. All right? So, let us try and understand between these two now. So, as you can see, self means aware of surroundings. Uh, now, in self means that you're fully aware of what is happening around you. You're well balanced, you're healthy, you're feeling good, and you can see all around you, you can talk to people. It's just making you feel so good. Now that is the real self. The depression means lack of interest and motivation, which means you're sitting around these people, you're not feeling good, but you're feeling depressed, you're, you're demotivated, you feel like crying, you want to sit alone. You don't feel good at all. In self means growth mindset, which means you can grow the ability of learning and memorizing, improving your personality, improving the way you think, you talk. So there are so many things. Your mind starts to grow. Now that's a growth mindset. In depression means deficits are found in cognition and motor functions, which means your ability to think, ability to move forward, do things, it's all of wrecked. You're just sitting down in one place and ruminating about the past. That's what you do in depression. Self means learning and exploring new things and new places. When you're healthy, when you're with yourself, you want to go out, you want to see things, you want to enjoy your life, you want to learn new things, you want to see new places. That self, it's an amazing thing exploring yourself out there. You're enjoying. In depression means social and verbal deficits, which means you cannot speak well, you cannot uh, be with people around you, you feel demotivated, you don't feel good at all overall. So that's what depression does to you. Self means validation, which means I should validate whether this is right or wrong and I should not do it. 
that is called validation now in depression what happens is unpleasant state of mind no validation all the time you're feeling unpleasant you don't feel good you want to give up on your life you want to just sit down in one place and you want to uh, demotivate yourself and you just don't want to do anything at all you're just completely out of focus there is no validation this is the major problem in depression then what happens is right after that uh, let us try and understand um, so as you can see the risk of reoccurrence in depression is really high in cases like socio-economic status marital status uh, inescapable stress recognition abuse of childhood poverty and overweight bad neuroplasticity makes connection even after taking medications this results in CSPTC what does that mean it means corticostriado uh, pallido thalamocortical disruption this is that section that is a pathway that controls movement exec, uh, exec, uh, execution, execution, habit, information, and reward. If this is disrupted, then what's going to happen? Imagine, see, STC pathway uh, controls movement execution, which means execution is gone, finish. Habit information is finish, no recognition. And the third thing is reward. Uh, finish. At the, the, the point you would say like, you know, my reward, or what, or, uh, I'm not worthy of this. I shouldn't get this. I shouldn't do this. So the motivation is gone. Finish. This circuit is disrupted. Then you're gone. You're going to sit in one place. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do about it. Uh, you cannot do much of those ability to recognize that I should move forward and do this and not be thinking about this. All of that is gone. You're going to sit down and just ruminate about the past and continue to be in depression. Look at the circuit. This is that circuit which is really dangerous. Then what happens is vascular depression including disruption of cortical striato thalamo pathways are the mod uh, modulating system vascular depression is also related to this system then what happens is depressive behavior depends upon chronic of often inescapable stress paradigms So then we reach to this point. What are we supposed to understand after this? Because now we're going to learn even deeper on these sections. Now, when we talk on depression, then we're supposed to understand is uh, what exactly depression is from here on. So over 50% of patients who recover from a first depressive episode will have second within six months unless they're given maintenance of antidepressant treatment. This is a fact. How many of them that they've been through depression, they come out of it, then again they go in depression. Why is that? Why is that? Now we are talking. Why is that? Have you even understand why is that? That's because of the unhealed of the limbic system. Your emotions are running fine. You're taking your medications, you've done everything. You've been in your regulation. But what about the hippocampus and amygdala? What about that? Who's going to be having a better performance on those areas? We forget to do that. And then what happens is the medications, they help you to regenerate 
cells in those areas. But unfortunately, not every people get that facility, they get that opportunity to rebuild cells in those areas. Which means patients will have depressive moods right after the six months of treatment if they're not taking any medications. <clears throat> So these two regions are highly responsible for having depression back again. And it's going to be wrecked. I'm going to be directly open today. It's going to be wrecked, which means it'll be stable for some time. Then again, it'll get into hyperactiveness. And then again, depressive episodes are going to come back. This is called neuroanatomy, not medications. So I'm going to make you explain in depth about all of this in further on. So then what happens is, underlying vulnerability is largely genetic in nature and that this underlying genetic vulnerability to reoccurrence also affects whether the risk factor are also present. Now underlying vulnerability is largely genetic in nature. Didn't I talk about that genetic is also involved in all of this, in depression as well, yes. So genetic is also playing an important role. Changes in genetics, changing in all of these, uh, you know, areas, is also, because the genetic is changing, then the plasticity was also change, which means the reoccurrence is really high. So genetic, why would genetic change? Genetic will change because of the sudden mood episode that happened after the treatment. The genetic changed and now the plasticity will start to change. I'm giving a clear talk on this. Mood change, genetic will change, negative will even increase and then it's going to get really high on uh, you know, negative aspects. And that's what it's all about in uh, terms of understanding this. So when we reach to this point, then what happens? Hyperactivation of DLPFC and VLPFC. What is DLPFC? Dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex and VLPFC in response to positive, which is ventral lateral prefrontal cortex, uh, positive emotional characteristics suggesting an intentional bias towards negativity uh, valence information. This was done by Carestis in 2012. <laughs> so what exactly I'm talking on this is uh, is that uh, the, the part of uh, DLPFC and VLPFC it responds to positive emotional distractors, uh, which means when we're talking about negative valence information, which means the, the brain will bias. In depression, how many brains get biased? Have you tried to analyze this? That uh, even if you talk any positive things, the brain will get biased and won't understand the part of positiveness. They'll always even have uh, the effect of, you know, punishing their part of their life cycle. That, you know, I'm biased and I'll never understand the part of positiveness, which means I can destroy myself at any moment. I can also get in this uh, part of, uh, what do you call it, um, committing suicide that comes to biasness. So if that is the condition, then what happens? Negative dysfunction thinking affects a person's moods, behavior, and physical state. The goal of CBT is to help a person learn to recognize negative patterns of thoughts, evaluate their validity, and replace their healthier ways of thinking, and to enhance change pattern of behaviors. Like I said, I believe in this, that, you know, um, CBT helps but not in every person. Above this one I talked on, the biased brain in depression is a major cause of the patient will never accept positivity in CBT. Unless if they surrender, like I am in depression, please help. 
but they're not ready to help themselves, but they're sitting there to gain some knowledge, then they won't understand anything. They're going to start to fight. They're going to go against what CBD is talking about, and they're not going to do anything about it. This is what the patient does in depression as well. The biased brain. Biased brain, why? Because it's coming from the part of genetics. Genetics means hard to treat. Unless you don't come to the realization, DLPFC, realization, VLPFC, realization that I need to gain some positiveness, your life is wrecked. You're going to stay in that depression for, for years, for months, and you'll never recover from it. Reduction volume is also going to happen. Then what happens after that? Reduction in FA have, have also been associated with early life adversities in form of disrupted maternal infant attachment and correlated with an increased risk of both anxiety and depression. This was done by Col Copeland in uh, 2010. So, what are we talking about in here? Frontal association, which means reduction in this section is really high. That's because of the early life adversities. Now, you could possibly say that, you know, in my life I've struggled a lot. My parents were not good. Or, let's say, uh, my uh, mother was... Uh, abusive or alcoholic or drug abuse. So there is a genetic changes that's going to happen in human early life that's going to reduction in this section. Uh, this is very dangerous because reduction in this section means lack of learning, lack of memorizing, uh, lack of understanding, impulsivity, abusive language, uh, abusive behaviors. This is uncontrollable behaviors, addictions. All of this is going to happen because of this. And this is a major deficit is going to find in these people. So the question arises, how much can you fight back? Right after these problems, how much can you fight back? Do you have any recognition? Even CBD won't help. Please try to understand, reduction happened. So what we need to do, I'll explain you in this video. Challenges is to come out of this. So I'm going to explain to you all of this in this video so you can make your life a better living, isn't it? My quest is, is to give you the best answers to your questions. And that's what I'm fighting for, is to give you the right answer in depression, to make you realize what you need to do, and then you can come out of it and live a happy, abundant life, back again, fully. I'm in my present moment. I have better emotions. I'm loving my life. And I love my life to a full existence. Isn't it? And that's what's going to make me happy. You must have seen how I'm feeling happy. I see you happy, I'm going to be happy. So then what happens after that? Well, let us try and understand what you need to watch out for in depression. <clears throat> During depressions. So as you can see, you need to watch out for first is addictions during it, uh, uh, you know, depression. Chances of addiction is really high. Sugar addictions, drug addictions, high fatty acids, uh, which means high fat food addictions. You know, high carb addictions, addictions like alcohol, sex addictions. Uh, so, no, sorry, no sex addictions. Uh, addictions like, um, you know. Uh, you know, validating your, uh, you know, depression. That's also an addiction. Validating your depression means every now and then I will talk on my addictions and I'll validate it to beyond my regulation. That's also an addiction. It turns a serious addiction with time because unless you don't validate it, you're not going to feel good. That, that, that's where I'm talking about addiction. Then comes high fat, fat diet. Like I said, beyond addictions, now, we're looking at high fat diet. High fat diet means french fries, 
we're talking about uh, deep fried food, fried chicken, uh, you know, uh, fried red meats, fried fish, anything deep fried, chips, just deep fried. During depression, you may eat that. You, you won't feel good, but you want to increase the part of salt in your body. And that is what depression does. High, high in salt to make you feel a little better. And then again, you go back, you eat that. And that's going to gain a lot of weight. Then sleep cycle is disrupted. Watch out for it in depression. If the sleep cycle is disrupted, then you need to do certain things about it. Be aware of it and then have regulation of your sleep. Then comes heartburn. Heartburn in uh, depression is really high because once you're depressed, your body gets a dis acidic and the chances of having heartburn in digestion is really high. Then comes GRD. Uh, which is acid reflux is also really high which means burning in your throat burning around your chest area you're not feeling good when you wake up at night you want to have some acidity like you know acid uh, medications and stuff to make you feel good then watch out for emotions are you seriously uh, feeling uh, really bad then you should recognize those emotions and not extend it you should stop right there and go for the treatment to balance that emotions then comes activity during the day watch out for activity during the day whether it's good or bad if you're not able to do your activity you're struggling with your daily activity then watch out for that reach out for people that can help you bias thinking means always thinking negative no positiveness during depression so you need to reach out for a counseling department to help you to think positiveness especially cbt then comes fatigue this is generally happens in depression a lot of fatigue on the surface feeling tired because you have accepted depression feeling low acceptance of depression so that's really high and so you cannot do much during the daytime you want to feel sleep you want to lie in bed you want to do nothing at all that's depression then comes finding reason to satisfy your depression uh, the, most of these people they generally go for uh, stuff that actually helps them to find to satisfy depression how they lay down and they'll keep saying why this happened why that happened why this happened and good I am I'm here I'm not worthy enough to do anything it's better I live like this for the rest of my life so the limbic information cycle is helping you to actually end the order is helping you to finding those reasons to be in depression look your own system is killing you I'm not saying this your own system is killing you if you don't modify that then it's going to do it then who's responsible for this then what happens is let us find out further in more investigation <clears throat> if you continue to live in depression then what happens? Then there is something called as inflammation, food inflammation. Oh my goodness. Now we're talking, isn't it? We have reached the end stage of everything. From here on, it's all about understanding how to improve it, recognize from here on. What is food inflammation? And why do, we, why do we need to talk on this in depression? Food inflammation can cause coronary heart disease, my friend. And food addictions are really high in depression. Food addiction means bad food, unhealthy food, eating unwanted hours to feel good, gaining a lot of weight. This is going to affect your heart. It's going to cause inflammation in your bones, uh, you know, like body ache, bone ache, uh, decrease in calcium, headache. In depression, this all happens. So you need to watch out for that, right? What are those foods? So as you can see, food that cause inflammation, refined carbs, white bread, sugar and pastries. This is highly consumed in depression. So watch out for that. French fries and other deep fried food. Uh, Please, I talked about this 
fried food can cause inflammation in your body, can cause indigestion, acid reflux, bone inflammation, can cause even bone ache, can even cause headache, can even cause you know indigestion which will also lead to heart disease as well <clears throat> can even cause liver fatty acids pancreas uh, you know fatty uh, uh, pancreas can have a lot of fat in them so you need to watch out for deep fried food and depression sodas and canned fruit juices oh my goodness this is way too much pepsi coke fanta uh, canned uh, fruit juices you must have seen you know the real fruit juices you know these canned juices uh, you know you can also say you know mango juice you get in the market now in depression people also take sugar you know just to feel good they drink anything Fanta, Coke, Pepsi uh, you know what do you call it Maza you know, that's also available right Maza mango juice fruity mango juice you know you get these cranberry juice canned juices don't drink any of that because that is high in sugar which means a lot of fat is going to accumulate in your body then comes red meats that can also cause inflammation brain inflammation food inflammation finish can also cause diabetics you know especially in terms of uh, you know depression if they eat these deep fried red meats barbecue deep fried uh, you know just unwanted hours then finish then comes margarine it's very bad for food inflammation depression to watch out from margarine should avoid it completely it's very dangerous for the body Apart from all of this, what we need to understand is medications can also gain weight. Any sort of medications that are provided to you to change your mood can also gain a lot of weight. Now, there are a lot of medications out there. I'm not going to talk on each one of them. But basically, antidepressant can cause solid weight gain. It can cause serious problems with your uh, pancreas, can cause food inflammation, which means uh, deficit found in, uh, you know, uh, pain in your bone joints, pain in your body, headache, mood swings. These are the serious problems in depression. So watch out for those medications. I highly recommend don't take them. Avoid it completely. Then what we need to understand in the end is, uh, so as you can see, skin lightening products contain harmful chemicals like mercury, can cause skin rashes and discoloration, scarring, digestive immune system, damage and anxiety and depression. Why did I keep quiet for a couple of seconds? It's because how many women do this? Even if they're healthy women, if they apply all of this, then they also catch depression. They'll have, because they'll have a lot of skin problems, then they get into depression. If nothing happens, they'll get into depression. So watch out for all of these products. My humble request is to all the women. I have a huge respect for women. Please don't do this to yourself. Respect the way you are, respect yourself. God has given you this body. Respect yourself. Respect this body. And don't do anything like this. Please don't do don't do it. Just wash your face. Use uh, chemical soap-free uh, stuff, you know, like apply it on your face and wash it. That's it enough. Don't do anything. Respect yourself. And that is why I say that please don't do anything that can cause damage to your face, to your body, that can increase depression. Now they've come to the end stage. My dear friends, I've almost completed everything now on depression. These are the end stages. Please understand from your own. So what we need to understand in depression from your own is stimulate the vagus nerve. It helps you in uh, 
release from depression. How to stimulate vagus nerve? We're going to find that out now. So as you can see, cold water immersion. Now you take a tub of cold water, put some ice in it, and then you dunk your head in it. When you dunk your head in that cold water and just come out of it, don't stay in there for minutes. Just dunk in and within a few seconds come up. And when you come up, then you're going to start to feel good. That's the activation of vagus nerve. Uh, this is a really good exercise, actually. If you can do this, then keep a towel and wash your, wa you know, just wipe your face and your head and feel good about it. But do this in, during the daytime. Don't do it in the night and morning because the chances of you can catch cold and cough. Then comes listening to calm music and soothing music. This you can do it in the morning, daytime, and at night. Stimulating vagus nerve means calm music. There are so many calm music in YouTube. You can search for deep relaxation, calm music. It's going to help you to relax your body and get rid of depression, especially in the day hours. If you do this, it's very effective. Day hours means soothing your body. After eating lunch, you do this. After eating lunch, do this. It's very nice and effective. It's going to give you that soothing effect. Just lay down, it's going to feel, make you feel good. When you make up, it's going to feel good about it. Focus on deep breathing, short inhales and long exhales. Wow, what are we talking about? Short inhales and long exhales. Why are we doing this? In depression, we want to calm the heart pace. We want to calm that heart. So vagus nerve helps you in regulation of your heart. So when you do that in depression, it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel relaxed. Do this for five minutes, 10 minutes every day. Three for four times a day, especially at night also. Please do this to give you a better sleep regulation. <clears throat> Chanting Om. Chanting Om triggers a vagus nerve and it also opens up your ears, your frontal cortex. So sit down in the morning and chant Om. If you can do it with yourself, then find somebody else. Breathe in deep. And then close your eyes and start. Oh. And continue doing this. Oh, it just makes you feel so good when I do this. It just makes you feel lightheaded here and everything opens up. Do this. This is not about religion. It's in vibration that's going to affect your brain and your temporal lobes. It's going to make you start to feel good. It's a stimulation of vagus nerve. And then all of that is going to start to make you feel really nice and easy. When you do these exercises, you're about to change your life every day. Daily habit, just do this. Stimulation of vagus nerve. Somatic sensory is also going to improve. Om chanting in the morning, best exercise. And if you can do this early morning, highly recommendation between 5 to 6 a.m. If you chant this, because it's going to improve your thyroid gland as well, improving your digestion is going to make you feel hungry, it's going to make you feel better, performance will increase. 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. home chanting is the best way to improve your thyroid glands, improve the part of your hunger, your appetite, your body temperature. It's going to improve your really overall health. Between 5 to 6 a.m., chant home in the morning. Highly recommended. It's going to help you. Now what you need to do after this is, is to improve depression. How is that? <clears throat> so as you can see, the first thing you need to do is aromatherapy. Why, what do I mean by aromatherapy? Aromatherapy, what it does is, uh, you should infuse some oil, essential oils, a lavender, uh, lemon, lemon grass will be too strong. If you can do it, it's okay. Rose is good. Then there are jasmine, really nice. Yeah, there are so many uh, aroma uh, 
essential oil. Now if you infuse them, you sit in a room and you start to smell it. When you smell that fragrance, what's going to happen is going to hit your prefrontal cortex. If you do this in the morning, then you, it's going to be extremely good, especially, you know, like uh, after eating your breakfast, wait for another 45 minutes and then you do this. Why am I saying this? Is because then it's going to calm your system down. It's going to improve the part of your depression. That smell is going to open your frontal cortex. Then you can do your daily activity during the day hours. Aromatherapy is highly, highly recommended in the mornings and in the night as well. A lavender essential oil at night is very good because it's going to help you to de-stress your body and so you can go to sleep then comes brain stimulation activities right after aromatherapy highly recommended is brain stimulation activities activities that are involvement in uh, brain stimulation like um, example is uh, playing word like in a word game what do you do you're stimulating your brain to think then uh, you can also do uh, what else can you do with the brain stimulation painting painting is also good uh, then you could do something like uh, what else cooking cooking is also good it's going to motivate you to do more so introducing to new and challenging ingredient recipes is a good way to improve your depression uh, especially don't stress yourself, but easy, interesting recipes that are also going to make you feel happy. Then comes the part of exercise like yoga and aerobics, highly recommended in depression. Uh, aerobics means, and yoga, it's going to stimulate you, stimulate your serotonin and your dopamine receptors, neuropenephrine. So it's going to motivate you to do more. Yoga and aerobics. Aerobics and yoga will make you feel good. If you do it with other people, it's going to make you feel, especially when you do at the beginning with the Surya Namaskar. Wow, I love that. I don't do it because my brain is damaged. But Surya Namaskar is a really nice way. I love that. When you do that with other people, it gives you the positiveness. So Surya Namaskar in yoga, perfect for depression. It's going to make you feel good. It's going to motivate you to do more. Pump you really hard. Talk to people means improving your amygdala. This is the next thing. Talk to people. Talk to people means improving your emotions. Talk to people who have a best interest in you. That's going to improve your amygdala. Improvement in your emotional regulation. Best. Talk to people. Then comes, make a routine. Make a routine means we want the limbic system to be in discipline. So when you keep limbic system in depression, the, the discipline, then what happens? Better performance, better understanding, better emotions. To make a routine every day. That my target is when I wake up in the morning, I need to do this. In the afternoon, I need to do this. And at night, I need to do this. So the more you do it, the more of your limbic system will come in control. Improvement in amygdala and your hippocampus will improve with time. So make a routine. Eat food that calms you down. Very important. Calm you down means make you feel good. Isn't it? So not to feed depression. If you do something in the morning and when you sit down you're motivated, so now I want to give reward to that motivation is to eat food that calms you down and make you feel good. That's what I'm talking about. But when you're in highly depression, you don't eat food to calm you down. You eat food actually to feed depression and that's where the negativity increases. In depression, highly, highly important is the next thing is limit the use of social media. Please understand this. Social media can trigger your depression and it can reoccur depression on high. So please limit the use of social media when you're in depression. It can seriously, seriously reoccur on a hard level. Then comes increasing activation of motor functions. Every day, tasks should be performed 
in terms of uh, active lifestyle. You need to bring in some active lifestyle. Active lifestyle means moving your hands and legs and motivating yourself to do more. Now this could be anything. Work on a project that's going to make you feel good. And just keep doing you. And the day you keep doing that, it's just going to bring you out of your depression. Surround your people that motivates you to do more. That's very important. So, <clears throat> I'm going to end here. If you have any questions, I highly request you to please, please, please email us on Precious Brain Lab and we will give you preciousbrainlab at gmail.com and we will uh, answer your questions to our best of our abilities. And also I request you to please, please subscribe our channel. I see a lot of people watching our videos but very few of them are actually um, you know, subscribing. Please requesting you to subscribe as this is a non-profit organization. Request you to please, please subscribe. And also, please look out for my um, Instagram, which is pavandara33. You can go and watch out some exclusive videos apart from here you'll get to learn so many things 10 minutes of short videos you can learn much from there as well so apart from this i'm going to end here i hope i've given you most of the questions in future i will come up with several videos on this as well on the others as well i keep saying this so god bless you all and may you have an abundant, sweet life, sending you so very much love, light, and healing. Until the next time, I'll see you on a new video. Please take care of yourself. Thank you so very much in showing your interest in neuroscience. Thank you all. It means a lot. Thank you.